I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praises shall continually be in my mouth. It's a joy to come again and share with you these moments of devotion. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, Jesus has come again to Capernaum. The Bible says while He was there, the Sabbath day came, and as was His custom, on the Sabbath day He went to the Lord's house to remind you that the Christ we serve was a church-going Jesus. That wherever He was on the Lord's day, He made His way to the Lord's house. The Bible says He was the guest preacher that day, and He taught in a way in which they had never heard before. The response of the people to the teaching of the Master was overwhelming. Mark says, but also in the synagogue that day was a man with an unclean spirit. Jesus was there. Uh, church had gathered and Satan was there to remind us that the devil comes to church. In fact, the only one in that church that day who knew who Jesus was, was the devil. Because the Bible says he began to cry out, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. It's amazing. Church had been going on for some time. Satan was there, and he was there undetected until Jesus showed up. How can the devil come to church and be in the worship undetected. I'll tell you how. He was there and he was going through the motions just as they were. When they sang, he sang. When they clapped, he clapped. When they said amen, he said amen. Jesus' teaching was too much for him and the Bible says he began to cry out. He began to have evil and emotional outburst and there became a confrontation in the synagogue that day between Jesus and this man who had this unclean spirit, this man who was full of the devil. Mark says Jesus rebuked him. The word rebuke means to put a muzzle on it and sometimes when Satan shows up, be it at the church house or your house or on your job or in your community, and he begins to have evil and emotional outbursts, sometimes this has to happen. Sometimes it's a situation, but most of the time it's, it's people. And Jesus says to him, rebukes him and says, come out of him. You know, we think that whenever there's confrontation in life, be it at church or our house or the community or the job we work on, that Jesus is not present. But the Bible tells us Jesus was at church that day. He was teaching from the Word of God. The people were responding and Satan was there also. Uh, we have to remember that the Christ we serve uh, didn't go seeking confrontation, but He never ran away from confrontation. For the Christ we serve is not just a meek and humble lamb, but the Bible also tells us that He is a lion from the tribe of Judah. So Jesus shows us here in Mark chapter 1 that we can't afford to have peace at any cost. We can't, for the sake of peace, allow the devil to take over. And how many times we can, we can see in life, be a church, home, job, community, wherever, 
and we just remain silent. Maybe this is a word for white evangelicals that you can't be allowed to remain silent any longer in the face of evil and injustice and wrong you have to stand up and say something the bible says jesus rebuked this man with this unclean spirit and said come out of him jesus spoke to the situation and we're in the midst of this pandemic, this economic downturn, we find ourselves in the midst of racial injustice and somebody has to stand up and speak to the situation. He said, be quiet, come out of him. Mark says that the demon shook the man and he cried with a loud voice to remind us that Satan won't leave without a fight. Jesus cast that demon out of this man with a word to remind us that our word is no match for the devil, but there is power in the word of our Christ. The Bible says this man began to reel and rock and shake and roll this helpless man had rolled into dust and in despair, but he rose. And when he got up, he rose to wholeness, to joy and peace. Here is God's word for all of us today. Jesus makes the difference. In our lives, Jesus makes the difference. In this time of crisis, of pandemic, economic downturn, racial injustice, dealing with loneliness, dealing with life's uncertainties, Jesus makes the difference. Here is a man with an unclean spirit. Jesus speaks a word and the man gets delivered to say that there is hope for the worst of us because Jesus makes the difference. Christ can free you from the evil that has you in bondage. Whatever is holding you, whatever is keeping you from being all God wants you to be, doing all God wants you to do, and having all God wants you to have, Christ is ready, willing, and able to set you free. This text says the gospel is for all, even the least and the worst of us. So God's word for you today is it doesn't matter who have written, has written you off, how long you've been written off, Christ can still write you back in because Jesus makes the difference. Brothers and sisters, I have to confess that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who makes the difference in our lives, who's able to set us free from all that binds us. We pray, O oh God, that you will speak a word of deliverance in the lives of those who find themselves bound even right now. For we pray and we ask it all in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. I want to remind you of our prayer calls Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m. and Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. Then don't forget, sisters, about our Saturday morning women's Bible study. Sunday morning at 8.45 will be our Sunday school review, followed by our 9 a.m. worship. I want to ask you to continue to give. If you haven't been giving, begin giving. And then you may not be a member of the Mount Olive Church, 
But if this ministry is blessing you, we ask that you would sow a seed in this ministry. Stay home, stay safe. God bless you.